All right, today what we're going to do is restore a pair of JBL L65 Jubils. I want to point out a couple of things here before we get started. They have a glass top. Obviously, remove the glass top, store it away safely. When you move this cabinet, there's a couple of things you want to pay attention to. This thin trim on the top of the cabinet, and especially this front piece, this can be easily broken off. Don't pick up the cabinet by this front piece of trim and be really careful how you handle the cabinet. You don't want to break this trim off. Alright, so we'll remove the grill. Gently on the bottom here. Velcroed on. Obviously, the foam rot on the woofer. We're going to put new foam on it. When you do the, the JBL, you want to make sure to use the proper JBL suspension. This is not a speaker where you want to use the generic one size fits all kind of thing. You need to have proper compliance and you need the proper size because the suspension is going to attach to the back side of the cone. And if you want to get this right, you need to put it on the back side and not the front side like a lot of people do. And there again, we're going to we're going to remove the dust cap. We're going to surgically remove the dust cap so that we can shim the assembly into place. This is a real tight gap right here and you don't want to try this. I know a lot of these suspension do-it-yourself kits say that you don't have to cut the cap. Well, don't believe it. Alright, let me show you something uh, around here on the back. Alright, we're also going to recap the crossover network. Six screws here on the back. You have to remove those screws to pull the crossover out through the woofer cutout. And I'll show you that when we get that done. That's it. Go. Alright, one thing I need to point out about removing the woofer on the JBL. The JBL is mounted with a machine screw that goes into a T-nut. When you're backing out the screw, you need to let the screw come out. If you keep pressure on the screw gun, you're going to force the T-nut out. And then you're going to have to, uh, once you force that T-nut out and that T-nut starts to spin, then you're not going to be able to remove the screw all the way and that's going to be a major pain for you. So when you unscrew the JBL, don't put any downward pressure on the screw. Let the screw back out so you don't blow that T-nut. Right now with the woofer removed, and we've already taken the screws out of the network, now we're just going to lift it up out of here. We don't need to completely detach uh, the wiring harness. It can stay in place. All right, what we've got here is a mylar cap that is probably still good and we could probably leave it in there but we're going to change that out anyway and then we've got these two uh, electrolytic caps here that we're definitely going to change a lot of times when I'm doing a JBL restoration like this uh, you know normally I recap some I'll remove the old caps but in this case I'll leave these old caps here in place I'll cut the wiring harness and I'll install the new caps here. But I'm just going to leave that in there in case, you know, for whatever reason somebody prefers this to be all original and, and uh, I've got room to do it. So I'll just leave these caps in place and I'll just move the wires over to the new caps. Also, don't even think about in changing out these inductors. These are special uh, proprietary inductors for this circuit. and, and just leave those in place. They're not going to be bad and uh, you're not going to get a, a real substantial improvement uh, substituting air core inductors. I know you'll you'll read that and, but uh, take my word for it. I've done hundreds and hundreds of JBL restorations and there's not going to be a big benefit by changing these out to the air core inductors. Go. All right, now we've got the woofer out of the cabinet. This is the original uh, L65 Jubal. It has the Alnico 126A woofer. Really tight tolerance in the gap. 
You have to cut the caps and shim this. You you don't have much of a chance of success without shimming the voice coil of the center. The gaskets. We've taken what was left of the old suspension of the gasket. We took them off with our utility knife. And we're going to save those gasket pieces. We're going to reuse them. And of course we'll have to clean the the foam, the rotted foam off the back of it. We'll clean those up. We'll reuse those gaskets. We've scraped the old edge off with our utility knife. There again, when we use a utility knife in this situation, it's pretty dull. It's been dulled out over, you know, use. and We don't want to slip and cut this cone. So we have an intentionally dull knife. The suspension on the, the JBL 126 is, is attached to the back side of the cone. And the first step in removing the old suspension material from the back of the cone, what we're going to do is we're going to use the front edge of this blade, which is not even sharp at all. We're going to run it around here like this. We're going to gently lift the cone like this so we don't damage the voice coil. We're going to come all the way around. We're going to get all that old suspension material off the back side of the cone. When we got it all the way around and we've looked and we're, you know, we're eyeballing it, we make sure that uh, it looks good and we've got everything off there we can get with the knife. We're going to come back and once again we're going to lift the cone up straight, keep the voice coil line so we don't damage it, and get a wire brush or grass brush. And we're going to go like this all the way around the cone. We're going to get anything that's left of that old suspension material off there. Then after we've done that, we're going to come back with a, I use a paintbrush, whatever kind of brush you want. Get anything else left. And then after that, the old good old canned air. We use the canned air to, to get rid of any of the dust, any of the powder that's left laying around there. Alright, now next step we've got to cut the dust cap off so we can shim it. In this case you need a really sharp X-Acto knife. You need a fresh blade. You need to be surgically sharp here. Inside the, under the dust cap, glued to the top of the voice coil form is a mass ring. It's an, uh, it's an aluminum ring that has been glued to the top of the voice coil form to add mass to the assembly, uh, thereby lowering the free air resonance. So we want to carefully come and anytime you're cutting a dust cap off you've got to watch out for the leads. You cut the lead wires in half, you know, you're not going to have a working speaker. So I'm going to come in just a bit. I'm going to aim for the top of this mass ring. I'm going to come in with my super sharp exacto. And I can feel the tip of the blade on the mass ring so I'm not going to damage the voice coil or the leads. Anytime you're doing this don't go any deeper than you have to. Alright, we get around to there. Make sure it's all the way through here. There we go. Alright, we're going to lift that up now. I haven't cut all the way through so that when I lay it back down it's going to be right where it needs to be. And we're going to take our shims. These four shims. We'll do one right where the uh, joint in the uh, voice coil form is. And one opposite and then two more here to, to uh, get our assembly centered exactly where it needs to be. And even though we're using shims, your centering is not guaranteed just simply because the shims are there. You have to, as you apply the suspension, you have to make sure that this cone is in the gap where it needs to be, the voice coil, and this cone is even. You see how it's still, even though we have shims in here, it still rocks around. So you have to be aware of that. It's hard to put a one-piece shim or, or full shims under. They catch in underneath the mass ring. You can see right here this piece of aluminum. That's what I was talking about. That's the mass ring. It's glued into place.
All right, now we're going to put our adhesive on the back side of the cone. We're going to flip it over. We're going to use our bottle here. Of, of, of uh, In this case, we're going to use the latex. We're going to use the water-based glue on the back side in case we get any glue that uh, comes through between the cone and the suspension onto the front side that we don't get um, a tacky looking mess because this will dry clear. It'll take a long time to dry. It's got a long open time, low tack characteristic, but that's okay in this situation because we can let it set if we have to for hours or even overnight to, to completely dry. But you can see the, the landing here on the cone where the suspension is going to set. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some adhesive in that area and we're going to take a small brush and we're going to use the brush to put it right where we want it all the way around the cone right out on the leading edge right where the suspension is going to set. And it's overrun, it's a little bit over, that's okay because we're going to let it dry face down it's going to run down in there and uh, we'll go all the way around and we'll apply the suspension all right now we've got the adhesive all the way around on our suspension landing on the back side of the cone <coughs> if you've got any overrun here just just take that off you can use your finger or your brush or paper towel whatever you want to do but Sure, we get all that off there. A piece of something here that we don't want to have in the way. Get that out of there. Where'd that come from? All right. The uh, speakers in the L65s, the um, the 126A, the 122A, the 129H. You don't want to use a generic one size fits all type suspension. You need to get the proper part and wherever you buy the suspension your supplier you need to make sure that this is exactly the right dimensions you need and exactly the right compliance you see it that's really thin compliance being the reciprocal of stiffness so see that's pretty high compliance there in other words it moves easily it's pretty thin you have to get that right on this is a precision transducer you can't just go stick any suspension on there that uh, you get for two bucks on the on the internet now you see how that cone rocks still moves around a little bit so you need to be aware of that when you apply this but I'm gonna go down I'm gonna push it down in the gap here so that when I put the suspension underneath it it, it tends to hold it in the right place and you just work your way around probably not the the best speaker for a a do-it-yourself or for the first time you've ever done one of these foam suspensions this wouldn't be one to start on I wouldn't think you might want to start on something like an original large advent pretty hard to mess those up they're not such a tight tolerance as this now notice here on the suspension too notice how this side now is pulled up and uh, if you look over here you're, you've got a certain radius it's narrower than it is over here this suspension is slightly undersized so when it stretches to go around here you're going to get a good bite here but then when you when you glue down the outer uh, suspension onto the frame you need to make sure that you get the same distance all the way around so what I'm going to do now is pull this up I'm going to go all the way around I'm going to pull it up to make sure that it's meeting the cone at the exact place on the suspension that it needs to be right where the flange bends so we'll pull up, make sure we're even all the way around you see I laid down a little bit better now alright so next step we're going to use a different glue here um, you could use a rubber cement this is a, this would be a good glue for that edge or uh, this particular uh, this is not water based so maybe you need a little ventilation here but we're going to go all the way around we're going to lift the suspension up like this and we're going to lay a bead down here the, the same width as the suspension all right 
now we've got our glue all the way around. This is a not a long open time, but it, it doesn't tack up as quickly as the uh, as the Boss Stitch 100. So here again, we want to make sure we're even as we can. So I'm just going to use my finger, and I'm going to go all the way around. By the way, you see, I use a turntable. This makes this operation a whole lot easier when you have the speaker set on a turntable. I made this one out of a woofer cutout and a, a bearing, a ball bearing that I got off the eBay. Now, notice you've got a certain distance here, about an eighth of an inch. All right, now look over to the other side. We've got more here. It's not set exactly even. So as this is one reason we use a glue with a longer open time here, so I can move this around. Now I'm going to pull this where I need to. That right there is about an eighth of an inch is what you want. So when I get back over here and it's more than that, I'm just as I press it down, I'm going to pull it. And like I said, it's got it's got some open time, so it's not going to stick immediately. You're going to have to keep working it. But in this case, that's a good thing because that allows you to, as the glue starts to tack up, it allows you to place the suspension right where it needs to be, about an eighth of an inch. Now you see it's starting to tack up. See, that's a little bit more than an eighth of an inch there. Use a rule if you have to, but you should be able to eyeball that. If you can't see the difference between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch, you probably shouldn't be doing things like this. Now you see we're starting to get the same distance all the way around, and the glue's starting to tack up, starting to lay down. Now once it starts to tack up and lay down, and we're sure we've got the same equal distance all the way around that we're centered up on the frame, once we get to that point, and we'll get a tool to finish up here and I'm going to use the end of this brush just a little plastic toothbrush but the tool the end of the brush makes a good tool to put the suspension down so you just work it down like this slowly work your way around make sure that you've got equal distance here in this case you can use this as a gauge if you want to because it's just the right thickness if you can't eyeball it get yourself a little gauge you see how there's just a hair more there We'll just pull that over just a little bit more. All right, so it'll we'll, we'll keep working this for another minute or two till it sets down. Then it, when it sets down, we'll get our gasket pieces all cleaned up. Then we'll lay another bead of glue right along the outside here, and then we'll reuse our gaskets. Alright, now the gasket, uh, the suspension part has the glue set up here. So we're going around, we're cutting out the mounting holes. Here again, we're using an X-Acto knife. I'll cut the back side first and then come around this way so it finishes up nice and clean. So all of our four holes here are cut out. And we're going to come around and lay a glue bead down here for the gasket replacement. This gasket's not necessary, it's not functional, but it's a dress gasket. It dresses it up, makes it look nice and finished. Alright, glue all the way around. Our gasket sections have been cleaned up. Sometimes these J-Bell gaskets do that. Don't worry about it, just put it in place center the hole on the gasket with the hole on the frame that little piece you can push down in there they won't come together exactly so center the hole in the gasket with the hole on the frame and then meet these ends together but this is critical that you get this hole lined up in the gasket with the hole in the frame here. Push it down into the glue. There's your fourth piece. 
you see there's a little gap there that's the way they are originally you can stretch this out a little bit and you can move these around to where that gap is even the same distance all the way around all right now we're gonna let that dry and last step will be to pull the shims out and to re-glue the original dust cap back into place all right we've got the new suspension installed the gasket has been glued down reused now it's time to uh, finish up and replace the dust cap so we pull our shims Make sure we're moving freely in the gap and there's no rubbing. That's all good. Put our dust cap back down into place. Make sure we get it exactly where it was to start with. Get it right in place. Now to hold it down, I'm going to use a weight. In this case, it's a T-yoke out of an old speaker. Put that weight right on there to hold it down. Now you look all the way around, you make sure you're lined up right sitting right where you want it to be. We're going to use our white glue again on this. And we're just going to put a little bead all the way around. Once again, you, you might have seen some videos on the YouTube of how you do speaker repair. And this is what you don't see anybody use. I, I can't understand how anybody that does this quite often has not figured out that this turntable is the way to go. Center it up on the turntable here. Turntable really comes in handy for this type of operation. So we've got the bead, we've got the weight on. Take a brush. Make it real pretty. All right. Now we'll just let that sit there with the weight on it. That glue will dry clear. It'll be functional and pretty. All right, now we're going to finish up these crossover networks. You know, on the network, you could go the route. You could go to one of the guys who manufactures a completely new crossover network for this speaker. There's some high-dollar stuff out there. And you could go for real high-dollar components in terms of your capacitor quality. You could replace all this wiring harness like some guys do. I'm not going to do any of that because I'm not I'm not modifying this speaker. I'm restoring the speaker. These two electrolytic caps here, I'm going to leave on the board. Normally I'd pull them off, but then again, if somebody ever wanted to put this back for whatever reason to all original, we're going to leave these in here. You're going to re also read that that you could change these inductors out for air core inductors to improve the sound. I wouldn't do it if I were you. That's up to you. So what we've done is we've, we've glued our 4 and our 8 microfarad capacitor to the board. Let the glue set up. Uh, the 1.65 uh, microfarad mylar cap, we've changed it out for film and foil. And we've cut the leads here on the original capacitors and transferred the leads over to these replacement electrolytics. Now all we've got to do is solder everything in place and we'll be done with the network. Alright, we've got the uh, woofer suspension replaced. We've got the crossovers recapped. Be sure and clean your pots. These are high quality pots. They, uh, they don't oxidize or get corroded. These, I think they're actually manufactured by Alps. But shoot a little cleaner in there, wipe them back and forth. Alright, so the last thing we've got to do is reinstall the woofers. JBL woofers are held in by these machine screws that go into these. This is called a T nut or a fang nut, some people call them. This is inserted through the back side and the screw goes down in, into, the, into the T nut. So when you're screwing down in here, if you push hard on this screw, you're going to force this T-nut backwards. You're going to force it out. 
these fangs are going to lose their grip and this whole thing is going to spin. You blow that T-nut out and you are going to have a hard time getting this because now this whole thing is going to turn and you're not going to be able to get the screw out. If you're going in with the screw, you're not going to be able to get it tight because the nut has slipped and it will spin in the back and there's no way to get a hold of it. So be very careful. I, I wouldn't even recommend using a drill or a screw gun here. Use your, you go by hand here and don't put any downward pressure on that screw. You force that T-nut out the back side of that wood and you're going to be in a whole world of grief there because it's going to take a heck of a lot to get that back out of there. So don't put any more downward pressure on that screw than you have to. Alright, everything's reinstalled. We've got the crossovers recapped and reinstalled. We've got the woofer suspensions replaced and remounted. So, we're ready to get another 20 years out of this fine pair of uh, JBL L65 Jubils.